So greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the One My Real Board series. Uh, as you can see here, we're going over a game between Lee Sedol when he was a Nine Don. Well, he's still a Nine Don. That didn't really make any sense, but continuing on. And Gu Li when he was a Seven Don, who later became Nine Don. There, fixed it. Way to go, me. As you can see, hopefully, uh, the board is looking much better than it did previously. I think we've eliminated that sickening greenish tinge, which forces me to uh, drastically change the colors and turn my background purple and really, really bad things like that. We're not going to go into how long it took me to fix this. That won't be open for discussion. Suffice it to say, we are doing number six and then number five of Go for Go's top ten pro games. And by that I mean uh, top ten viewed pro games. So all of you who go to Go for Go uh, to get your pro game fix, you've indirectly voted on which games I've been going over lately. Sue, Guli as a seven down, opens up with a three four stone, like you do, and we settle because he is a very aggressive player. Decides that he is going to take upon himself the options of inviting a diagonal opening. You want it? It is yours. You don't see it taken a lot, and you don't see it taken here either. Generally speaking, because uh, if we do this, we're playing a more of a territorial game where white has Comey. That's a bit more uh, uncomfortable. Nowadays, we tend to focus on frameworks, things like that. So we can out-develop the person who gets Comey, right? Generally speaking. Generally speaking. Not always, but, you know, it is a thing. White takes four four points. Now we're both nice and flexible. However, it bears noting this 3-4 stone is currently facing his opponent's stone, so we're going to do something from here. Either we're going to enclose with one of these, or we're going to approach. We would not typically play here, because all we would want now is white, is sente, so we can go back uh, and play the upper corner makes this really, really difficult to deal with because we want to kind of like pincer and deny growth here, but we kind of can't because we're then in between two areas and as this gets stronger, it like threatens both and it's eh. stuff to handle, stuff to handle. So when your 3-4 faces your opponent, you want to do something in line with that. You need to know what you're going to do if your opponent plays here. Guli plays low, and we get a pincer by Lee Seidel. We get an approach by Guli. Yes, we could settle. Yes, we could uh, change directions into maybe a Chinese variation. But he says, I'm going to start fighting the player known for fighting. And I'm going to do this as a 7 Don. So a bit of a rank disparity here, but good old Guli, he's going to take it straight to Lee Siddle. The person who is scary for all of his fighting. Alright. We pincer here, obviously. We wouldn't really want to back off here. Because you're allowing something like this to take place. And then what are you going to do? You get Sente, so are you going to kick? You could kick, but then you're going to like invite this. You need another move here, so then you're going to, what, invite something like this? Is that really a good opening for you? Really? I don't, I don't think that's a really good opening. This opening seems um, less, less, less good. Let's just say it seems less good. So rather than that, whoops, go back, Mr. Stone. You don't get off of there. There we go. Pincers. Have to ask the question now, what are we going to do? There's so many places that we can play. We can play here and play Jiseki. We can play here if we want to resign the game. We can go back and settle. Seems okay. We can change directions. Also seems okay. 
Heck, we might even be able to simply flat out, whoa. We could do so many different things right now. So many different things. Which one is correct? In truth? Just about all of them, really. Clearly we're playing a, a game where we're just trying to keep our stones light and maybe use them later. So, I mean, whichever one that you follow up, I mean, that's... It's pretty good. Ghoulie chose to redirect here. We're going to play this move. Diagonal out, because black getting it would be very, very bad. So we diagonal out instead. Black backs off. The reason why he's comfortable backing off is because this move does not kill black. This move does not kill black. No single move here actually kills that white that uh, black stone. So the question is, are you going to go all in trying to kill it? And let your opponent play elsewhere? If we play this way, we're, in, we're kind of feeling like we're in trouble as white. Because we need Sente here, I guess, to actually kill this off. So we have Profit. But I mean, at that point, how many stones have you given up? Just to kill off a corner, you know? You can't go all in on one area like that. We don't like. No bueno. Which is why it's understandable that white plays here. We don't want black. We don't want black changing directions, getting maybe the corner uh, side area, and leaving white to have to try to kill off these stupid stones that have been that have been uh, just left behind. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Black's turn. We can settle. We can enclose. And we can settle over here. You're a weak stone. Not sure what that means, but thank you very much there, Leo. So black aids the one stone. Why? Because the influence here doesn't really matter given these. We're nice and strong on the out. So he chose to live on the in. Whoops. So I see white take the wall. Black is just going back to live. White's of course keeping some pressure on him. You can probably hear an airplane going by overhead. And both players are poking at each other as they're settling. Pretty straightforward stuff. This is a bit of a surprise, though. We settled playing this way. Giving Sente away. But I guess it's okay, because we're going to extend once and then can't go any further. So that's reasonable. There we go. So we have a wall. Black doesn't have very much in the way of territory on this uh, side, but he is alive. Make no mistake, that group is alive now. And we have influence, but it seems to be all that white has. It seems to be all that white has. Now, I don't mind saying 
this would not make me comfortable. As white now, I know the rest of this game, I gotta use that for something, right? And black also knows I need to use it for something. I think if I was black right now, I'd probably be tempted to play something like this or this just to reduce and not worry about the one stone. Because if my opponent responds to me here, whoops, then I would be rather happy to be contesting the area that can grow. Right? Guli does not play that way. He actually plays in the way that, once again, I would not really recommend. He's like, oh, I'm just gonna live. I'm just gonna live with this group now too. It's like, what? It's like, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna live here too. It's like, do I not? Do I get nothing? It's like, no, 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 no. You get nothing. It's like, but why are you? This is not how go is played. You cannot just take away my everything. Are you crazy? This is strange. I think maybe this was Joseki back when this game was played. Nowadays we would play here and then extend. And then extend, turn, Hane, extend, Incente. This one's a little bit weird. Either way, we still extend because it's not alive right now. So we take. White now has Sente. Does anyone like White's position? Because Zen says he does not like White's position. I have to agree, this makes me a little uncomfortable. But we can say with some authority that White really hasn't made mistakes yet, right? I mean, it wasn't a mistake to play the diagonal. It wasn't a mistake to lean here. That followed as a result. You could argue that maybe this move here was over was a little bit too strong. But other than that, it seems like it seems okay. I mean things should be fine, because we haven't seen anything that's overtly wrong yet. It's just very uncomfortable. Eric Jehan says White is such a noob. I wonder if that's why he lost to AlphaGo. Just asking questions. Just asking questions. So White tries to use his influence to uh, invade. I thought B12 was slow. Um, sorry, once again, you've coordinates. I do not. Let me see where B12 is. B12. Oh, the turn there. Hmm. That one? Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Interesting. If he doesn't, then he gets to definitely link up with the stone, though. That could be more of a problem. Hard to say. Hard to say. But he's using his influence to try to attack the group. Because, you see, you don't want to just use the influence to try to develop. That way... Oh, God, I'm going to say it. Oh god, I'm going to say it. Because this way is really easy and it's gote. So your opponent could play pretty much wherever he wants uh, in the center of the board to try to reduce you, right? That way lies danger. That way is a little bit uh, too easily seen through and responded to. So White says, I'm attacking this group. Using my influence. And now everyone knows the response here, right? We're going to put pressure on him. We could do this. 
But because influence is a thing, we're going to expect this one into maybe this one. Or maybe here into here. Instead, white, black says, I'm going to keep pressure on you. White says, ah, chance, chance. Getting to maybe set a little bit, maybe get some shape here for himself. Got a cutting point. Do we go to Ko? Will he go to Ko? Now, I would never, ever go to Ko here. I would back off. The reasons why I would back off are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you don't know why I would back off here, drop by the stream sometime. See how often I win Ko. You'll, uh, <laughs> you'll have a better understanding. Instead, we go to Ko. All right. Ko time. Now, where do we possibly have a good Ko threat? Note, I'm going to say good Ko threat. This is not a good Ko threat. Because we destroy the top, we lose the corner. Who cares? Who cares? Is this corner really worth the strength in that? Probably not. I would say that's not a good co threat. White plays here, saying maybe I can kill the entire side. That is a pretty good co threat. So we respond. And we retake. Um, I think I wanted to say this goes here. Yes. O4. What's O4? Oh, the attachment there? Um... I don't know. At worst, you're going to Hana in, then he's going to cut. We'll see. We'll see. But now Black needs a co-threat. Black's co threat is obvious. We can poke to destabilize the region. Check this out. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry, that's C. I'm sorry, like I said, you've got threats, I don't. What's O4? Oh, we'll see. Wait, that's a C? Oh, I see C4, C4. I got you, I see what you're saying now. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, like I said, I'm I'm far away. O's look like C's to me this far away, I apologize. So C4 would be, would be this one then? Right? Third line, fourth line? Did White just move twice? What? Did he? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you're right. My bad. Here into here. Into retaking the co, clearly. And then he goes here. Anyone know why? Can anyone tell me why he did that? Can anyone explain how this is a threat? If we... If we fill the co, right? Don't fill it that way, but let's just... For the sake of argument. And then we push. And we respond. And then I want to say this one. You can see the problem, right? It's once again a threat to kill. 
Yeah? Everyone agree? Sweet. So this is actually a threat. That move right there. If you can find this kind of move in a co uh, battle, you'll probably beat everyone 5Q and below in co. So black responds. Black increases the value of the co. White counterattacks. Black abandons trying to fight. Wait, 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 wait. Once again, once again, I forgot to take the co. I suck at co. Oh my god. I am terrible. I apologize. There we go. Now we play here. Holy crap. This is going very well today. I like it. There we go. Black moves to murder. And now... Can we even live in there? Is it even possible at this point? I mean, do you see what is happening here? This is a huge, huge, huge battle. Oh my god. In the beginning of the game between these two titans. Speaking of titans, um, season two of that anime is now out. Not even trying to kill, just surrounding, making himself nice and strong, not taking, not taking anything. Now that he's nice and strong, we start poke, poke, poke. White center is going to be huge. Maybe. We don't know yet. We don't know what the center is going to be like just yet. I mean, right now, black can take control here. Black can take control here. We don't really know what it's going to be like. And from here, escalating the co, I mean, I would consider using my threats right now as black to attack those stones and drive them into the center, right? Try to go into the corner. is ignored because this group living is very, very vital. And black, white strength is pretty uh, established at this point. Make certain that we're nice and alive. No weird shenaniganery gonna happen. At this point, I would imagine that white or that black is properly valuing the uh, wind condition of his opponent, and he just wants Sente to do something about this. We hane. And connect. Unfortunately, that connection's not Sente. Because this move is not an Atari, if black plays here, white can respond immediately without being pushed back. If we could Atari here and push back to here, then the Hane would absolutely kill. But right now, don't see that really happening. So white says... 
on guard. You can see what he's threatening, right? By pushing here, there's like all sorts of nastiness. Black says, okay, we're going to go for it. White says, oh, yes, we are. You're right, we are going to go for it. Points out the weak point in his shape. Connects. Retake, or sorry, not retakes, but takes. Now white can live, but this crazy guy is going to go to co with the group. He could live, but we're going to go to co instead. Make no mistake, white could have lived there. But instead, he's going to co. A co that risks the entire upper right hand corner. Because by connecting this and getting the follow up, we kill this group. Flat out, it dies. So make no mistake, this is now a co for the entire group. White extends. Black says, nope. I'm killing you. We extend on in. We made a huge freaking exchange now. The left for the top. Tell me that's not a huge exchange. This area of the board for that. Thank you, Siri. Appreciate it. I really need to turn that thing off. It always comes up. So the question is, it is now White's turn. Where do you think the largest move on the board is right now? Where do you think the largest move on the board is? You're White. You killed that, you lost your stones. What's large? How do we find the largest move? Usually, it's by looking at the largest amount of lines on the board and playing there, right? Pretty easy. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, this is a nine line area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is an eight line area. Um. The corner is still open. So is the middle. Extend bottom. Uh, oh, 017, extend bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Looks like that's the consensus. Other consideration is not just play on largest area, but it's also do we have weak group? So remember, this was like nine and this was eight. But you can give like plus one, plus two, because we have a weak group here, right? So if we want to like be all mathematical about this, this gets like a bonus modifier to the side because we have stones, because we have a weak group there. Weak group gives bonus modifier to, uh, to largest move. It's that lovely little thing urgent before big. Further modifiers, black has influence. Black would love to use said influence. So rather than just counting out line versus line and playing there, we get modifier for reducing influence, modifier for helping weak group. So since there are plus two modifiers for this, we can safely play over here and say that it's large, because I'm doing two things at once while playing on one of the largest sides of the board. Does that make sense? 
Hope that makes sense. Black plays. White decides to be greedy and take both for himself. <sighs> both points for himself. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Now what do we do? I mean, do we actually defend the corner and give him whatever he wants? Nah, Gu Li is an aggressive player. He goes on to become, for a time, for a time, one of the strongest players in China. And you don't get there by letting bullies push you around. It's like, you want not just one large point, but both? Ah, nah, we gonna fight. So white comes out. We're defending this way, not this way. Because this way leaves weakness against this stone, it leaves weakness against the cutting point to like enlarge the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and play here instead. Now our corner's a lot stronger here. There's still this, but we can sacrifice the stone for outside influence if necessary. Like that needs to come out. Black secures himself in preparation to play here. And if he can force his opponent to play another move here, then he got this one in for free, and maybe he can go back and play like a larger move down here. Not this one, there's too much space, maybe here or here or something like that. So we're going to try and deny it with the good old push, push, Atari, Atari. Try to wrap around the stones that are killing uh, our sacrifice. Which is why we play here and we don't do it, right? Because if we play here, then the following moves we can expect for our opponent. This one, threatening to kill off the two stones, so we Atari. This one, Atari the one stone and having to extend. And then this one to connect on up. Oh my god, that would be amazing. If you can picture this on the board right now, and you should be because the stones are actually there, then holy crap. That would be amazeballs for this group, for this amount of influence that White has on left-hand side. It's like all coming together. I mean, just throw in a few more stones and kindly ask resignation, please. Come on. Put the stones down and leave. So yeah. Not being too greedy and killing that one stone? So friggin' important right now, which is why he backs off. He's not doing it because... Oh my god, I'm scared of Lee Seidel. No, he's doing it because if he doesn't, he gets wrapped around and all hail breaks loose. All right, so we're still trying to do the wraparound thing, only Ghoulie's on to him, right? Ghoulie is on to him, it's like, I know what you doing, and I ain't gonna lock it around in these parts. Trying to, try and do it anyway. Let's see if we can't get something done. Gotta get something done. How do we reduce an area? How do we reduce an area? Serious question. How do, we, how do we reduce an area? Do you know? It determines everything from what we do right now. We have a choice. We have two cutting points that we can pick right now. We can play here. Or we can play here. How do we decide which one to pick? How do we decide which of those two sexy moves we want to play? One of these moves is not like the other. If you said, 
Well, Dryden, I know exactly how to reduce an area. Yes, yes, yes. My dear, the way we reduce an area is all we did was find a weak group and chase it on into the influence that we wanted to reduce. Yes, 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 that is what we did. Then you, sir, sound really, really old. And, but you are quite correct. We want a friend to go running. So, we're going to go and attack this group again. See if we can't uh, light a fire under its butt and get it in gear. It's like, can you run to your friends, please? Because I would love to reduce you. Just, 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 just run this way. I'll follow. I'll follow. But what is this? This wasn't in the plans. He was supposed to play here. And then we would play, like, here. And then we would have access to the middle. Did White not get the script? Or here. This would be good, too. If he plays here, then we come out. That That's great as well. But what he's playing off script. What is this? What is this? Guess we turn now, right? And then we're getting cut. Okay, well we can save that stone too. What is this shenaniganery? What is White doing? I don't understand. I mean, doesn't this noob understand that if he just keeps saving his groups like this and trying to live, we're just gonna come out and erase everything. He can't hold on to this. That would be that would be insane. So he doesn't. So he doesn't. Okay. Danger, Will Robinson. We are getting really screwed. If White gets this move in, that is a moyo of epic proportions. Now, let's have some truth time, chat. Would you really stop and count this? Myungwan, you're allowed to respond. But, but the average Joe, would you really count this exchange? Would you stop and be like, okay, this is by that, plus this, and those stones in the corner, and I'm going to get this, and I could probably maybe cut through here, and maybe there's this and that. Would you really, like, count this to see if it's worth trying to go after here and giving up all of this fine, fine territory? If your answer is no, yeah. Neither, ne neither is Guli. He's like, I'm coming in. I would take time to click on score estimator. <laughs> cheats! Cheats! Hacks! Alright, so Black's gonna... Get cut. I mean, no two ways about it. The plan is coming to fruition. Now, as much as we would absolutely love to begin reducing, we can't. Because Atari connect, Atari connect, turn dead, question mark. That's what we refer to as being cut in sente. So that's now a ladder. <laughs> oh crap. Well now what do we do? Uh, um, 
We could kill off three stones. <laughs> oh shoot. Um. Hmm. Well, what do we do here, chat? How do we look at an area like this and all of this and begin reducing? How do we do it? How can we possibly begin to do it? What do we look for? Tengen. Lol. <laughs> oh god, someone actually said it. Um, no. <clears throat> Sorry. No. Because the thing is, this isn't really a ladder. Like, let's say we play here, and you extend out. It's entirely possible that we're just going to kill those off. Because... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven lines of territory in the middle of the board seems reasonable for three friggin' stones. You know? So beware. Beware. Instead, what you want to do is look for... For the weak points, chat. You want to look for them weak points. I see one there. I see one here. And I see one here. So black starts here because this seems like a, a weak area. You got this move, you got this move, and this move on it. If we're going to come in, it's going to be starting here. Oh, look at him defend his weaknesses. He's not like, uh, boom, you don't connect or whatever. Because then that means we Atari. That means we can do stuff like this and get shape here. And we'll probably live, too. But bam. No weaknesses for you. Please give me shape, Black asks. White says, you trying to live in places where you don't belong, boy. I'm a kill you. Welcome to Co. Welcome to Co, everyone. Population black. That is probably a sentence that will um, probably ensure that this video is... Censored on YouTube, now that I think about it. So we're in a co. Black says, I've got co-threats. I can threaten to live back here. And White says, uh, no. So we go back to co. And White's like, hey, I can do that too. Check me out. I'm a live. And Black says, uh, no. And we go back to Carol. Got an aggressive game on our hands here, it looks like. Pretty big. Threatens to live with the eye and break out. Pretty smexy. Such a weird shape. Oh, such a weird shape. And back to Ko. Escalating. Uh, 
extra ending, seeing if he can kill everything. Apparently that's not not good. We're creating more co-threats while we play really, really large stuff. Black here sees a chance for him to get the right side for himself. So he's going after it. While black or white tries to resist. Which is what all that was about. Trying to see if we can't control the shape. I'm gonna go ahead and kill that off. Throws on in. Again, we're trying to control shape. And these are also further seeking to create uh, co threats. Because we now have co threat, co threat, co threat, co threat. So I made three more. While black is here, trying desperately to keep what he considers to be hits. Only downside to that is to keep what he views as his. Ha ah, Don't ever do that. Oh my god, that was a bad idea. That's wrong. No, that's right. To keep what's his, he has to go to Ko. Okay. See how this is working out? Threatens to kill off the bottom right-hand corner. Is denied. Now you might say this game is complicated, and you'd be right. Atari. Oh, sorry, my bad. White just played twice, didn't he? Wait, did he? Respond. Yeah, took stone, and then co. Threat. Wait, that is not what he did. Do you know why he didn't play there, chat? Can you see why he didn't play here the Atari? Is everyone able to understand why he didn't connect that? I hope you are. He plays here instead. Because that was self Atari. If you can see that, congratulations. You might be stronger than I am. Because I actually played that stone before I even thought about it. Now, regretfully, this does mean at the moment, white can live here whenever he feels like. We need this move by black in order to keep this area dead. Ain't that something? So now we go back to Ko. That is the theme of this game. We have Ko, Ko, Ko. Ko everywhere. Yes, there we go. Threatens to come on in. White says mine. Black says Ko. White says, uh, thank you. Black says, and I will kill you while I come into your area. And it's like, uh, no. I go back to Ko. So Black comes up, threatening to break into that middle. Activating his stones. Kind of dangerous, especially with this still as a possibility, right? Right, 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 right. So white feels compelled to respond. Which means we get to cut for more Aji. 
That was your move? Good job. Have to not die here. Free move. Looks like we're settling. Looks like these two stones aren't long for this world anymore. Let me go back to Ko. Truthfully, I would have considered just connecting up and been happy. I would have taken that as my win, I think, but I'm not as aggressive as these two, clearly. White says, I cut you, so you can't do that to me. And black relents and connects on up. Incente mine you because this Atari would be huge. Okay. So that's the game right now. That's the game as it currently stands. We have this position in which white has an insanely ungodly size middle. Absolutely enormous. It's huge. I've never seen a middle as large as this one. And we have a few other problems here. This double Atari leads into a connection, into an Atari, into a connection, into a kill. So this double Atari here could take a few two extra stones. We push. We back off. Make sure that's dead, otherwise we're in trouble. Take back. Threat. And back to Co. I'm a little bit surprised they're not just ending it by playing here. It seems big. But maybe you give it up. Here, 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 and then Atari maybe? Give up these four stones in exchange for getting out into here? I didn't consider that one. Didn't consider that one at all, actually. Could be, though. Atari is a huge take because these two stones die. So we have to do like so. Hane threatens to kill off these stones, so it's a very, very big threat. Therefore, once again, we have to respond. Oops. Sorry. I forgot to take and retake over here. Hope you can forgive me. So yeah, after this, black retakes the stone. And that meant white retook a stone there. All fixed again. So now we threaten here. There. This time, I won't forget. There. God, I'm terrible at Ko. I keep forgetting to retake the bloody stone. What rank am I? 10Q? Okay, good to know. Retake. Threat. Answer. Retake. And once again, a threat. Breaking into the middle. That would be huge. And retake. 
And now White's finally like, you know what? Forget the fracking co. Can you believe how long they played that out? I can't. I actually can't believe how long they played that out. Just to back off and be like, fine, I give up. Here's your move, like I mentioned earlier. Because if we play here, we play here, we can't Hane the dead. So that means we have to connect here, and this gets to connect back. That's big endgame right there. Ooh boy. This suddenly turning into endgame? That is huge, man. Play the Atari. The Atari. Threatens a connection. Black connects, and Atari. White goes under. Time to do a little bit of a poking. Little bit of a poking. Little bit of a poking. All is Vicente, so might as well get it in all for free. Take the stone. Again, same thing for free. White connects. There's now a co here that for a change we don't actually play. That must mean that what black is fairly content with his territorial count. Sorry that these stones are a little bit hard to see on the board right now. Connection under means that we would have to take and then we get to connect underneath here. Which would be pretty big. But we will never see the end of this game because, well, how far white can take his end game. Because white resigns, black wins. White is a little bit behind. A little bit behind. He has this, but he only has that. Whereas black has corner here, he's got corner here, he's got the kill stones here and here and here and the capture there. Now, granted, this is pretty big for white as well. I mean, this is a nice middle with, with, with anchorage. We got, we're anchored here into the corner uh, because those stones are dead. So yes, white resigns and Guli beats Isedol. When he was seven down versus the nine down versus the infamous nine down Isedol. So congratulations to Gu Li. You can see why he's a little bit of a strong player. I do like White's play here to build the middle. But yeah, it just seems a little bit too much. Really hard to use that wall early on in the game. And when he was finally uh, had to, or got to be able to, it was at such a huge cost. But still, he found a way and was pretty big. Was pretty big. Anyway, interesting game.